Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we gather here on this beautiful Sunday morning. Lord, we gather as community to worship you and to hear your word spoken anew in and through us. Lord, help us to set aside the things on our to-do list yet left to do today, the graduations, the work to be done, all of our things, that we can just focus on you in this time so we can be filled up, so we can be sent out. We ask this in your name, Jesus Christ. Amen. So I need your help um, right away, okay? Um, you got to finish um, the end of the sentence, okay? So I need your help with this. There are some things money can't buy. For everything else there is... Mas I heard you guys whisper it. Come on. MasterCard, right? Okay? Do you see where this is going? Okay? Melt in your mouth, not in your hands, which is M&M's. A diamond is forever. Oh, man, come on. A girl's best friend, that could be too. Okay. You are in good hands with Allstate. Um, have it your way, which is Burger King. Just do it, which is Nike. Arby's, we have the meats. We don't even eat at Arby's, and my kids know what that is, right? We are constantly marketed to. I could go on and on and on, and you could name them off all day long, whether you know them or not. I start it and you finish it, right? Because we are told by society all these things. If you don't have the money, don't worry, there's a MasterCard, right? You too can get it as soon as you want it. Don't hold back. We are always marketed to. This world tells us that being successful, having money, having power, having all the things is what makes life good. That's what you're going to achieve, right? That's what makes life good. We are marketed to constantly. And today, in our readings, in the book of Titus, Paul is writing to his friend Titus and telling him, the ways of the world are not okay. And Titus is really worried about his community, and he's worried that they're going to get drawn in and sucked in, and they're going to forget whose they are. And they're going to forget this message of the gospel and of Jesus Christ, risen, um, died and risen, and they're going to start living as people of the world. So Titus is thinking the best thing to do would be what? Go hide away, seclude themselves, and just be Christians together. That if we form this little community, um, we'll be okay. We'll make it through. We'll be Christians and we'll keep the bad people out. And Paul hears that that's what Titus is doing because he's really worried about all this thing of society coming in. And Paul writes Titus and says to him, it doesn't work that way. He's reminding him that we are to be in the world, but not of it. And today, you graduates are going to graduate, and you're going to go out into the world. And God calls you into the world to be his people and his hands and his feet. But he also calls you to be separate. He calls you to live differently. And what does that look like? That looks like serving and caring for one another and not just ourselves. It looks like um, making sure that you are spreading the gospel and telling others about a Jesus Christ that has died and risen for them. It looks like offering grace and forgiveness, all of the easy things, right? It looks like when your roommate um, has stayed up till one or two in the morning doing their assignments and you just want to go to bed, um, that you give them some grace or you have the conversation. Or um, it looks like um, being kind and respectful to your parents, even though you are trying to figure out what it means to be adults and what it means to leave. It means living as though we are a changed people. And Titus is reminding that. The next book that we see here is Philemon. 
Everyone say that, Philemon, right? It's not a book that you normally read. It's one of the shortest books. And Paul is writing to Philemon, and he says nothing about Jesus Christ's death and resurrection, but what he does talk about is what that looks like in real life. How that gets worked out. This thing that he's writing to Titus about, and Philemon, he's telling him what that looks like. So Philemon is, um, has this slave, Onesimus, another really common name, right? And Onesimus does something, he steals some money or, or does something, and he runs away because he knows that Philemon, he's going to get in trouble with Philemon. So he runs away to Paul, and Philemon, Onesimus becomes a Christian, and he says he's sorry, and Paul is writing back to Philemon and telling him to forgive him and to ma- be in right relationship with him. And so it's kind of telling us how to live out those things. So I could stand here today and tell you, go be good people. Go live as Christ tells you to live and just do all those things. How easy is that? What if I said that to all of you? Just do good things. Go serve people. Be really nice to your family. Don't say anything mean. Be a good friend and then go. Is that what Paul's saying? He's reminding them of their state also. That they are in need of a savior. That they mess up and get it wrong that they too have fallen short, and that over and over and over again in the waters of their baptism, they need to be reminded that they are forgiven and loved and sent. And that it's in those places, in our own knowledge of our own struggles and our own getting it wrong, that Christ shows up and forgives us and loves us and sends us. And so when we look around, so this part of the cross, our relationship with God, so that we can do this part, which is our relationship with others. So I can then look over and care for another person. And this happens in community. And it happens in community because we need community to remind us of the promise. My family were gardeners. How many of you have gardens? Okay, so I planted my flowers, um, my husband plants the garden, okay, he gets all the straight lines, he does all the things, and then he just disappears for the rest of the summer. <laughs> Love that man, but you know, it becomes my responsibility, it's an unspoken thing that happens in our family, and every year I love this time of the year, because I think this year I'm going to keep up with the weeding, this year I've got it. This year, I'm not going to let any of those weeds come in. As soon as those beans come up, I'm going to start separating the weeds from the beans, and this year, I'm going to have the best crop ever, right? And I might even can something at the end of the year. I mean, we're going to go big this year, right? What happens every year? By mid-June, when I've spent time at camp and I'm only home on the weekends, my husband hasn't watered the garden, so I'm annoyed. All the weeds are all over in the garden. It happens every year. I don't know why we think it's going to be any different. But that's kind of the way our lives are. All the things come in around us. You guys have this new beginning. All of the things in front of you, all of the exciting places to go and be, and guess what? Guess what's going to happen? Some of the weeds are going to creep in. And you're probably going to mess it up or say the wrong things or do the wrong things. We all have new beginnings in life and we kind of mess it up or we do the wrong things or we get it wrong. And that's why we come together as community to hear you are a child of God. You are God's no matter what. That God loves you and forgives you and that he calls you and that we do the job of cleaning up the weeds. At some point I have to go out there and make sure that the weeds are gone and pick the beans from the weeds and figure it all out. But God is the one that works in and through us. That we do it as a community when we gather here and we know our own need for a savior. And then we go out. We're called to be out into the world. We're called to be in the world telling others of a God that loves them and forgives them. We're called to be a part of community in our schools in our jobs, in our families. God doesn't want us to hold up and hold that to ourselves, but he wants us to be in the mess. And so as you go from here, 
We pray for you, and we pray for the best, but we also know that you need a community that reminds you of the promise, and that you are God's now and forever, just as we all gather in community. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for your Son, Jesus Christ. We give you thanks that you have walked alongside of us, that you have forgiven us, that you have called us your own. Lord, as we go from this place, as these graduates go into the world, Lord, we just ask that you would bless them and keep them. Lord, that when it gets messy or when um, they need to be reminded of the promise that you would place people in their lives to walk beside them, to remind them who they are. Lord, and we just ask that for each and every one of us, um, that we would be reminded again and again of whose we are, so that we can be your hands and your feet in this world. We ask this in your name, Jesus Christ. Amen. At this time, um, we will sing to